Okay, could we talk a little bit about the um, assessment bank okay. that's been developed and um, you know uh, what, what it will include, um, how you would expect teachers would use it yep. and, and so on. Okay, the, um, I think the key thing that we, we um, the, the, the QCAR project aimed to do was a story about alignment. Now, the, um, the, there's been a lot of research that has pointed out that um, the, it's not, a, not so much the quality of assessment, it's the confidence with assessment that a lot of teachers have. They, um, the, the notion of oh, the uh, disregard of the importance of assessment. So we've, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the researchers found that it's really important to have that, the notion of curriculum intent, teaching and learning, um, assessment and reporting aligned. So that's that's a really um, fundamental message of of the QCAR process. What we have done is, um, as well as the essential learnings, we have developed these things called standards. Um, and people who are familiar with the 11 and 12 process will have no problem with the notion of standards. Um, standards actually talk about how well a student has achieved at a certain point. So we have some standards and we also have some other tools called accessible elements and descriptors, which are kind of the standards, criteria and standards statements for particular key learning areas. So we've got those tools. What the assessment bank aims to do is show you how to put those tools into operation. So the assessment bank will have, a, um, I think it's over 500 assessment items or assessments. Those, um, those assessments will model alignment. It, they will show uh, the curriculum intent, um, and they will have a student uh, assessment task, and they will have a task-specific um, guide to making judgments. So in senior terminology, we'd call that a task-specific uh, standards and criteria matrix. So it'll, it'll basically be um, uh, an online resource that teachers can download. They'll be able to um, modify the assessment task for their particular context or they can use them as is. Each assessment um, task will have uh, a package and that will be a student task which might have multiple items in it. There'll be teacher guidelines which will talk about the, the alignment, uh, the learning experiences that should be developed around this, but there's sort of a point as to um, how you will develop a unit of work, some resources, so that'll be in the teacher guidelines. Uh, there'll also be um, a, a guide to making judgments, so the actual tool to make a decision about um, student achievement after they've completed that assessment task. And there'll also be some indicative A responses, so um, an A uh, a sample of student work that will show what an A standard looks like. The, uh, many of the items will also have samples of student work. So we're currently field trialling a number of tasks at the moment. So you'll see what an A student, a B student, a D student, etc. looks like. So it'll be a really rich um, set of resources for, for teachers to use. Once again, um, there will be, you know, the advice is it, it, there'll still be some work to do in terms of contextualising of your own skill, but I think it'll be really helpful. One of the things when the KLA syllabuses were released, they were released two at a time. So um, in one year you had um, science and HPE, uh, and the next year you had um, SOS and the languages, and then I think it was arts and technology. And then um, poor old maths just made it, but English didn't quite get there. Uh, before we had another reform. So um, we've released all the essential learnings for all of the eight key learning areas at the same time. Uh, we're going to have resources to support all of them. So in terms of working in a middle context, you will have all the tools together to integrate. They'll all be speaking the same language. Um, to be able to uh, integrate English and SOS or English and the arts was almost impossible because the syllabus was never settled. So we. We've got a whole host of stuff out there to use. Um, and there'll be, uh, just the, the, the items on the assessment bank are all quality assured. So they go through an internal um, process and an external process, as well as um, trialling them with, with students. So it'll be a, it's a really exciting part of the project. So. Excellent. Okay.
Okay, so probably just one final question and finish off. Um, and it's kind of, a, I guess, a bit of a summary um, response. But um, what advice would you give teachers who are just starting out planning with curriculum and, and trying to integrate across the curriculum? Like if you had to take, you know, three or four main points to sum up, you know, the best approach forward, what would they be? Okay. Um, it's a bit of a, it's a difficult one. Um, there is there's, there is so much advice that um, beginning teachers are are saddled with. So I think that um, what, one of the key things I think is that you need to have clarity of focus about what you want to, what you're aiming to teach. So clarity of focus comes from understanding the curriculum intent. You know what what is the the bit that I have to teach. You know what do I want kids to learn. Uh, how will I teach, you know, being clear on the strategies, the teaching and learning strategies of pedagogy you're going to use and being clear about the, the assessment. So uh, if you can get, if you can understand that, that relationship in the first instance, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're teaching integrated or if you're, what, what you're teaching, if you're very clear about this is what I want kids to learn after I put them through a series of learning experiences and this is how I'm going to measure whether they've learned it or not or how well they have learned it. So if you have those, um, you know, a clear message about curriculum, assessment, pedagogy, then I think that's, that's one message. Um, the other thing is um, in terms of integration is to um, not try and do too much. Uh, be, try and keep the integrity of the key learning areas that you're integrating uh, intact. So that means to, uh, you've got to understand the, the nature of those key learning areas. So I suppose that's a key message. Um, a third one, I suppose, is that there is a whole wealth of resources out there. And sometimes that becomes a bit overwhelming. But don't be afraid to you know, access those things. There is so much, uh, and I suppose um, the you know, things published on the web is, is one of the, the key sources. You can just find so much about nearly any topic you want. So use those um, and, you know, um, and don't be afraid to ask around to your colleagues who probably have a whole host of them too. So I think that's another one. And the, I think the, um, the last message is that we can get very technical about this whole endeavour, but the thing is it's about kids and it's about what's interesting and important to kids. So that's, I think that's a, a really fundamental thing. You know, you're, someone can write the most beautiful unit and it can look great, but it's about whether it will engage and work with kids. Um, and there, there's some, some really important um, documents out there that talk about what kids need for the 21st century. Um, and I think that um, what we have to do is to be very clear about how we're contributing to those sort of overall capabilities and things that kids need. So, yeah, I think that's the important thing. We can get sometimes stuck in the craft and realise what we're who we're doing it for. So that's how I'll finish off. Okay, thanks very much. Jerry. No worries, pleasure.